I just did a podcast with Ethan, who is who does a lot of positive pigeon drills. It's, it's a phase. It's a, or I shouldn't say it's a phase. It's a stepping stone in his training of his bird dogs. And so, the idea or the concept is, you take a training bag that has birds in it, pigeons, and with a pointing dog, you're trying to accomplish a couple things with this drill. I'll run you through what the drill looks like. You take a bird, you put it in your pouch, you take the dog off lead and you let the dog kind of work around. You got a nice big open area like this. I'm gonna take a bird out of my bag and I'm gonna fold one wing down and I'm gonna leave the other wing out. So I can hold it and I can go like this and one wing will flap. It'll be like an attention getter. So I'll take the bird and I'll flap the bird and I'll get the dog to see the bird and then I'll let the dog do what the dog does, which is probably gonna freeze and point out of kind of excitement. It not, has nothing to do with smell. They don't, not, I mean, maybe they smell it, but it's not about smell. Ultimately, we want a pointing dog to point with its nose, not its eyes, but this drill is doing a couple things. The first thing I think it does is it brings out the bird dog in the bird, or in the dog. So it's kind of an introduction to birds. This is the first time she's gonna see a bird. Look at her right now. She's going, oh, wow. So I want this to be, I don't want her first introduction to a bird be her running up on a live bird. I, I just, too many things can happen and it could be a little uncontrolled. So I don't want to risk a bird dog being afraid of birds. I don't want to risk a shed dog being afraid of sheds. That's why I use training dummies. That's why my pheasant dogs don't pick up pheasants for the first time that they see a bird. We tape wings to a dummy. We slowly get there. With her, she has in, inherent bird dogginess. So what we're gonna do is use this pigeon to waken that up. So I'm gonna hold it, she's gonna point it for a, a short count. We'll see how she does. If she stops and pauses, I'm gonna throw the pigeon out and let her chase it. Now, I don't want a dog, because the drill we're gonna do with that dog is when the bird flushes, we don't want the dog to chase it. Ultimately, I want my pointing dogs to point and when the bird flushes, I don't want them just free chasing. But to start out with, the dog, we want the dog to understand chasing a bird that flies away is useless. I never get anything out of it but tired. But we're coming back to dad, so the drill looks like this. I get the dog excited, the dog points. I release the bird, the dog chases. We see a lot of, we learn a lot about our dog in that chase. Will it run 100 yards or will it run 10 yards and quit? It just tells us what kind of bird drive the dog has at that point. Then, while that dog's running off, I'm going in my bag and getting another one, and I'm ready with it. So I'm holding on to it, and if she runs 50 yards and gets out there and decides, well, that one's gone, and she looks back at me, I'm not gonna say anything, I'm just gonna let her run. As soon as she turns and comes, starts coming back to me, I take out another bird. And as she comes back, I'm gonna have her pause at that bird, instinctive point. When she points, I'm gonna count again, 1,001, maybe 1,002, reward it and let it go, let her run. Now she runs off again, and maybe she goes half the distance. And then when she turns around, what do I have? I got another bird. So I'm teaching the dog to run out, to build this drive for the bird, to understand that coming back to you, to me, gets another bird. Running after a bird that's flying away gets me nothing but tired. So I'm, now I'm getting the dog to start coming back to me. And the third thing that Ethan says is it helps the dog. So it's intro to bird. It's intro to like a point and hold steadiness. And then it's also, he thinks it's a real connection builder with the dog to trust you. Come here. Come on. Akina. Come on. You get a bonus. You get a bonus little thing about what do you do when your dog gets away from you and has the lead? Like if I walk up to her right now, she's going to run away. This is a real distracting thing for her. So that's fine, come on. Come on. Good. So no panic, no freak out, no, oh, how do I get you? Move away from her, move towards her, move away from her. She comes to me, get the whistle out, okay, good. Got control again. So that's a real good example of how I handle a lot of that. Sometimes it's real frustrating, but you can't allow that frustration to come out at that point. So. So, it is, so that's the process of positive pigeons. They only do it a couple times with these young dogs. 
because the value of it is what we just talked about. The risk in it is the dog's not pointing based on its nose at all. It's just a sight point. Um, there's, you know, a repetitive drill like that, you only get, you get so much value out of it and then it's not really returning anymore. Could be creating some bad habits. So we're gonna get the, we're gonna get that out of it. Then I think they come back to this drill a year later or six months later, eight months later, and they start doing some formal woe training, which would be getting the dog to understand. So I've taught her to this point, we've worked on a little bit of, I don't even call it woe training, but I tell her, whoa. Good. That's about all we've done for woe training. I don't even call it woe training. But if you noticed me, I never walked to her. My shoulders are always away from her. I'm very, very conscious of my body language with her. I don't want to put pressure on a dog that's standing there, not quite sure why she's standing there, but I think it's part instinctual with her, very instinctual. She looks like a pointing dog, doesn't she? She looks beautiful. That little woe right there was not really woe, but it, I'm hoping that helps me when I actually do woe train her to have it go smoother. So I'm trying to bring this stuff out naturally right now. That's a real, we just did a podcast with Jerry Coulter, who is the breeder of her. I would listen to that because you'll get a little bit more information and understanding on, I had a lot of questions about the sequence. This is something that's so foreign to me. Some might, some might watch what we're doing, what I'm doing with her and say completely backwards, you should do it this way. Some might watch it and go, that's exactly how I do it. Some might say, I do it kind of like that, but I do a little bit of this. It's the same, I'm finding that training a bird dog is the same as training a retriever. Everybody does it a little bit different. You do what works best for you. And I'm trying to figure out what works best for me. I'm really using him as a piggy, as a guinea pig. Because the things that he's having problems with, I'm avoiding. Because we have a very similar approach and a very similar thought. Like right now, I move away from this dog, she's standing. This is natural to her. I'm not a great, I'm not that great of a trainer. I don't, I didn't train her to stand still. She stood still on her own and I'm just fostering it a little bit. Good. But you'll notice how I did it. I did it the exact same way that in our foundation workshop, I tell people to work on, we talk about remote sit. Traffic cop, stop, back up. We did it here on the walk up. Swing out in front of the dog, ah, ah, ah. back up, come back to him, pick up the lead, heal him off. It's just this one I'm not asking to sit, I'm asking her to stand. To me, woe means stop. So Jerry Coulter ties woe to birds all the time, always. So he doesn't do this. He doesn't work on woe without a bird. He does it with a bird. He doesn't quite do positive pigeons. He does it a little bit different, but we're gonna, I like the idea of this positive pigeon. So that's why I'm gonna do it. So, got a bag of birds? Yeah. I'm gonna move out a little bit. So, um, okay. I, you want me to, I'm gonna hold them. Do you wanna, do you want me to hand them to you? Or do you want the bag? I just don't want I think to I'll hold, fumble with the Oh, bag. so it zips? Yeah. Can you, can you keep them in there if you go like this or no? Maybe I just didn't want to open this and have them all go. Right, but if you keep them like that, can you reach in there and get them out, you think, or no? Maybe. Like if you close that and snap it? Yeah, we can try it. Why don't you do this? Let's do this. So, again, guys, have you ever done positive? You've, Chris I, has done I, a little yeah. positive pigeon with his dog. But I, I used a, like a dog kettle. But he smaller, did it. He, smaller dog kettle. He, when you say a dog kennel, where the dog was in it? No. No, just I had the pigeons in the kennel, so my I was hands-free. <clears throat> when I let the pigeon go, Willie went, I turned around, was able to get in that small kennel. Oh, so you did like did it out of a... Yeah, but a, a okay. way smaller. Sure, but you did, the same, you did the same kind of system of get him interested in the bird, let him freeze, kind of point, mm -hmm. reward that point with a bird. Yep. And I and again, what are we try, like? This is the big question. What are we trying to accomplish? All I'm trying to do is get her to unlock a bird, her bird dogness, come build a little desire because she doesn't really know what birds are yet. She's 
I can show you a video of her in my backyard pointing a pigeon that was a wild pigeon last week. She has no idea what it was, but it really had her interested. And she walked up to it and the pigeons are like almost tame because they're, they're wild, but they're not that f afraid of her. And she got from about me to Ben away and she just stood there for about 10 seconds. And then she went like this. She looked back at me like, what should I do now? And then she crept towards it and the bird flew and she got excited. And I mean, it was pretty cool, super natural. Okay, so do you think I can do that? Yeah, the zipper's open. Okay. You can get your hands in there. Okay. <laughs> Grab one and pull it out. Okay. I would just keep this side. So, again, <clears throat> this, just doing this with, with her, it requires some trust. Where's Helena? This just requires some trust. Let her go. I, I trust her because it's not the first time I've ever taken her off a lead. Like, I. We've done this quite a bit. I, hell, I like it when she gets out like that. So I'm gonna let her realize, you know what? We're together. So let me, before we even do this, I'll just walk around and show you, like she sticks with me pretty good. Probably should have threw it. She could care less. <laughs> Look at that, huh? So I went from a dog that I couldn't get to leave the manure alone for a minute to that. So now I look at that and I go, boy, what's inside of her? She's, well, 
Let's let her figure it out. Let's let her figure out there's nothing there. Good girl. Good girl. Hey, 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 hey. Uh-oh. Training Makina. No, I'd go try to net it. Dad. <laughs> Dad. Save the bird, ben. Dad. Hold on. Dad, hold on. Hold on. Is he trained? She's training. Yep. Dad, is he trained? He can't get a bird. Yep. Hop, 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 hop. <laughs> watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Girl, oh boy, good girl. <laughs> Look at her now. Look at her point that bird. Watch out, I can see you, honey. Daddy. Just, what, honey? Daddy. You're okay. Watch, watch. Come on, come on, come on. Just wait, hon. Yeah, just wait. Good girl. Good girl. Come here. Good, here. Here, 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 not right now, hon, I got it. Go by mom for a second. You're okay. Good girl, come on, come on, come on, good girl. Here, 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 come on. Come on, come on, come on. Here, here. There she sees another one. Here, 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 come on. Come on. No, 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 come on. Here, 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 here. She's become a little bit one track minded, right? Like, that's, a, that's all I want to do today. Just hang on, we gotta get her back. Come here. Makina, come here. Come on, come on, come on. Hang on, I gotta call her back. We gotta come this way. Come on this way with me. There it goes. Come on, come on. Makina here. Come on. Good girl. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good girl. Here, here, here. Here, here, here. Come on. Here. Here, here, here. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Dad, don't put the leash on her. I got it. Right. So I got a pretty hot dog that probably just is mind blown right now. Like, wow, what the hell was that? So I, I, I'm more than satisfied and happy with that. Did, did everybody see just that little glimpse of a pointing dog? You know? And reward it. And I think that maybe the best thing about it was when that bird landed on the ground and let her catch up to it 
and let her, you know, my fingers were crossed at that point real tight and my butt was a bit puckered because I thought if that bird spooks my dog, damn it. But it didn't. She was bold, she was cautious, she was bold, she was cautious. She chased, she ran. I'll be honest with you, my indecision, my indecisiveness there was, how much do I let her run after that one? Because I, I feel like it's two things. I want her to be excited about the bird and willing to put that extra energy in and chase, but I also want her to be able to come back, which I thought after a while of her fooling around out there, I don't know that she was in a real hurry to come back. So why not encourage her to come back and say, I got another one. So that's kind of where that value I think of having that bird ready is to take her and have her mindset change of don't stick around trying to figure out that bird. Instead, get back. There's more, there's more where that came from. So I, I probably was on the fence of how much of that running do I allow to happen before I try to get her mind back on me. Right. But you did a good job. You have another bird in that bag and you could have won another one, but there's no point in Yeah, that. there's another bird in here and I thought after that one, look, why press my luck? I'm more than satisfied with that for the first time. I don't think you do this drill a lot, but I think that it, it what it did was, I mean, watch her eyes right now. She sees the moon and thinks she might point it. <laughs> so I do think that this is an interesting thing that starts to click in a dog. And I, I'm pretty happy. I thought that was fun. I thought that was real interesting for her first, for her first time. It was different when I did it with Willie. Yeah. I was in sort of a, almost the hallway. The area was all cedar swamp, but I had nice area. So it was 60 or 80 yards long so that those birds just shot down that tunnel essentially and then gone. And once they were, once they got sort of in the trees or above the, the tree line, you couldn't see Out of sight, yeah. 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 And but then he turned around and I was like, buddy. Right. Okay. She, yeah. I, I saw a different gear in her too. Like, yeah. As soon as the bird went out, instead of hum de hum de hum de hum de hum, eat some manure, that kind of stuff, it was, boy, she ran with some purpose. That's the point, I think. <laughs>